I do a lot of traveling, obviously, and I'm alone most of the time, except my lady friend who travels with me. And at this point in the program, I'd like to have her take a little bow. Her name is Victoria. <laughs> Victoria has a home, uh, has a sister in our home in St. Louis by the name of Cleopatra III. And Cleo has a boyfriend by the name of Mark Anthony. <laughs> They're all three concert grands. No matter what you think you've seen, to my knowledge, there has never been an instrument manufactured any larger than this instrument you're looking at tonight. This is the neck, the column, the bass, the sounding board, and the sound chamber. Now, a concert grand harp has 47 strings. The strings are color-coded, C's are red, F's are blue or black. No, I do not play by color. <laughs> and neither is the music written in color. <laughs> the 47 strings go through two rows of a mechanism here on the neck. <clears throat> that mechanism then connects to seven rods running down through the column here, which then connect to seven pedals at the back and at the bottom of the harp. There are three pedals on the left side, four pedals on the right side. Each pedal has three notches. The top notch is the flat position, the middle notch is the natural position, the bottom notch is the sharp position. For those of you that are wondering what foreign language I'm speaking, if you've ever looked at a piano keyboard or an organ keyboard, you've seen white keys and you've seen black keys. The white keys are called naturals and the black keys are called sharps and or flats. That's the sole purpose of the pedals on the harp. We do not have a loudness or softness pedal. We don't have a sustaining or dampening pedal. That's all in the technique of playing. You're listening to the instrument this evening, as we say in the business, sound enhanced. <laughs> I've always loved the sound of that. It sounds so fancy to say that you're listening to the instrument amplified. The single notes sound. Then if I press with this portion of my finger right here, and so many centimeters from this point to the top of my thumb. I press the string and I play. I get a little note that sounds like a bell. Eight strings higher, an octave higher, eight notes higher. And where you have to press and play is not only different on each string, but it's different on each harp. This is the way harmonics sound. Then if you play with your fingernail, near the sounding board, you get what we call the guitaric effect. I think in some parts of the country they call it the banjo effect. <laughs> then if you play halfway between the middle of the string and the sounding board, approximately here, you get the harpsichord effect. Now the harpsichord is a piano keyboard type instrument where the, key in the, where the strings, instead of being struck by little hammers like the piano, they are plucked by quills. This is the harpsichord effect. When I used to have the time to play what I called wallpaper gigs, <laughs> and it can be a symphony job, a ballet job, an opera job, a wedding, a wedding reception, a private party, a dinner, you name it. But so often at these affairs, by the time they're over with, you feel about as useful as the paper that's been hanging on the wall. And I've had many statements made to me, but two have always, quote, stuck with me. And they, are always, they were always said with the same feeling. One was, oh, I haven't heard such wonderful harp playing since Harp Home Marks. Yeah, it took me years to say thanks. And all I could ever imagine whenever anyone said that to me 
was me beneath that blonde wig. <laughs> now the other one, and this was very special, was, oh, I just love harp music. Especially when you play angel music. <laughs> and I kept thinking, my God, they couldn't possibly know anything about me if they think I'm playing angel music. <laughs> But what the people are talking about is an effect that's identified with the harp. And the name of the effect, well, it's spelled G-L-I-S-S-A-N-D-O. Again, another fancy word to describe something very simple. Glissando. It simply means to slide. It looks like it's the easiest thing to do on the harp. But the pros that I coach from all over the world, I tell them as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the most difficult things to do correctly. A glissando is created by using one of or more fingers on either the left hand or the right hand and pulling those fingers across neighboring or adjacent strings. This is a glissando, and it can be done rapidly or slowly. This is a glissando in the key of C. For non-musicians, this is all white keys. <laughs> I'll move two pedals. Two more, two more. Now I'll move four pedals. To give you a better idea of what the pedal system is like and what we have to do, I'm going to play a series of chords for the final demonstration in this little mini lesson. A chord progression from an old ballad called Lover. And I'm going to count out the number of pedal changes which I have to make in order to play this chord progression. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now that doesn't seem like much, except this is the way it moves. feel like you're double clutching a high-class Mack truck. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies, I will apologize at this point in the program before you start throwing tomatoes and raw eggs and that sort of thing. Because this is the one song that I refer to in my repertoire as my male chauvinist pig song. When I'm touring and I haven't had chance to get out to the slopes to go skiing or fall down the hills, I get a little depressed around the end of February. And when I get depressed, the only thing that can snap me out of it is to envision an island republic in the Caribbean. People of color with a wonderful accent. 75 to 80 degree temperatures, beautiful beaches, and the male chauvinist pig parties ladies in very skimpy, skimpy bathing suits. And when I get in that space, this is a song that I like to kind of play around with. Down the way, when the nights are gay, and the sun shines daily on the mountain top, I took a trip on a sailing ship and when I reach Jamaica, I make a stop a dive. Said to say, I'm on my way. Won't be back for many a day, my high. But this down my head is turning around. I to leave a little girl in Kingston Town. Down at the market, you can't hear ladies cry out. Why loon there, it's the bear. Aki rice, some fish and nice. And the rum, he's fine. Any time of year but time. Said to say, I'm on my way. Won't be back for many a day, my eye. But this down my head is turning around. At the live a little girl in Kingston down. Down at the market, you can't hear ladies cry out 
Twilight there it's the bear Rocky rice salt fish and nice And the rum he's fine Any time a fear but die Sad to say I'm on my way Won't be back for many a day My high heart is down My head is turning around Had to leave a little girl in Kingston down
Buddhism is spread by the telling of the fable, like Christianity is spread by the telling of the gospel. This next composition is a musical version of the fable that starts out with the Lord from the underworld coming up to Buddha one day when he's meditating on the top of a very high mountain. And he says to Buddha, if you will kill yourself, I will remove all of the pain and suffering from the world. When Buddha finishes meditating, he flings himself off of this very, very high mountain. And at the base of this mountain is this crystal clear lake. And just before he crashes into this lake and his certain death, this flower mystically appears and magically blossoms, breaking his fall, thereby saving his life. Because as usual, the Lord from the underworld had lied. He was not going to remove the pain and suffering from the world. The flower was the lotus, of course the bud, the lotus bud. And that great jazz man from California wrote this next to Shorty Rogers, and he entitled it Lotus Bud.
Thank you. I'd like to approach the end of the program, How Time Flies When You're Having Fun, with a song that I'd like to dedicate to the gentlemen in the audience. In particular, those of you that might have been drugged to this affair kicking and screaming. But I don't want to go to a harp concert. Hey, mister, hey, mister, I just want a dime Cause I need a cup of coffee And a moment of your time I can tell you raise and hell The way I used to do But I wish someone had a talk to me Like I'm gonna talk to you. Oh, 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 I've been to Georgia and California and anywhere I could run. Stole a woman in Tennessee and we made love in the sun. But I, I ran out of places and friendly faces because I had to be free. I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. Thanks, mister. Thanks, mister. But please don't walk away. Cause I had this need to tell you why I'm all alone today. I can see so much of me still living in your eyes won't you share a part of an old man's heart on the day before he dies i've been to china and asia minor on any ship that could sing made some noise with some good old boys and we wrecked a southern jail i've seen the best men crawl and some teardrops fall There ain't nothing I didn't see I've been to paradise But I've never been to me Thank you.
I'd like to end the program with another tune you ain't supposed to play on this oversized cheese cutter. You have to envision 25 pounds of cheese and going. <laughs> Instant slices. My very first harp teacher, Velma Froud and I, from Detroit, Michigan, have always maintained a very special relationship. When my mother was alive, sometimes mother would have to call Velma to find out where her only was, because Velma always knew. Mother didn't. No matter where I am in the world, I call this woman at least once a month. In fact, I just called her this past Sunday. And our conversations are rather stark. They go something like, and I happened to be out of the country five, six years ago when this call was placed. Hi, Velma, how you doing? Hi, Harvey, how are you? Gee, it's great hearing your voice, Harvey. Yeah, it's good talking to you too, Velma. Where are you? And then I tell her where I am. And in the next few seconds, somewhere along the line, we switch back to that old student-teacher relationship for just a few seconds. She'll say, what are you working on? <laughs> yeah. She got to that point in the conversation. She said, what are you working on? So I told her. And there was this pregnant pause at the end of the telephone, and I waited about 10 or 15 seconds. And finally, I said, Velma, this is my dime. <coughs> she started to snicker. I said, lady, you're not being nice. Then she started to laugh. I said, now, dang it, you're being vicious. So through all of this laughter, she says, Harvey, I can't help it. This is absolutely insane. You can't play that sort of thing on the harp. So I recorded it. <laughs> 25, 30 years ago, a man wrote a very special composition. And thanks to John Philip Sousa, Football Saturdays and Football Mondays, we know that marches are in two, four time. You know, like one, two, one, two. Three, four time waltzes, which they still do by the tens of thousands in Europe. Then they do it outside all summer long. It's absolutely magnificent. Four, four time, rock and roll, disco, jazz, country, gospel, bluegrass, shake a tail feather, you name it, you got it. Everything's written in four, four time, just about it. Well, this man wrote a tune in five, four time. And I don't know how many professional dancers we have in this audience tonight, but unless you are a professional dancer, if you try to dance to something in five, four, you're going to end up with an extra foot. <laughs> Nobody knew what to do with this, except a young genius keyboardist by the name of Dave Brubeck. Between Dave Brubeck's genius as a keyboardist and Paul Desmond's genius as a composer, they turned this next tune into a wonderful jazz classic. And I'm talking about my recorded version of their hit tune and classic Take Five. 